What are we speaking about today? Today we're talking about sex before marriage. We are going to go deep into the consequences of having sex before marriage. But we want to acknowledge first off that we are hypocrites. Complete, are, yeah. complete hypocrites. Why are we hypocrites? Well, because we did not wait until marriage to have sex. And we're going to talk about that today. And at first I felt like I couldn't talk about this because Mm. I felt like such a hypocrite. And then I realized, wait, I need to talk about this. We need to talk about this because we are hypocrites. And we understand the consequences from a firsthand experience of what happens when you don't wait. And we also want to acknowledge as well that not only are we hypocrites and... We also want to acknowledge how challenging it can be in today's society for you to wait, right? Because we live in a society that promotes loss. We live in a society that promotes, you know, sexual liberation. Go out there, have sex with whoever it is that you want. Don't worry about the consequences. And um, there are consequences to that, right? Even if you ignore that, you can mentally ignore the consequences, but there are There are consequences that you will not be able to ignore. And we're going to be speaking about all of that. So we get how challenging it can be Mm -hmm. to um, do this in today's society. Yeah. And for those, of you, uh, for those of you who don't know us, I just want to give you a little bit of background. Uh, the reason that we didn't wait until sex or and wait until marriage to have sex is because we recently within this year, so it's June right now, uh, in January, really, we started connecting with God. And for Matt, it's reconnecting for me, connecting for the first time yeah. and reading the Bible and knowing Jesus. And so really, I think that fully clicked in for me around April mm-hmm. um, after we had already got married to be like, wow, I'm fully, um, you know, we're, we're fully on this journey. We're fully committed to Jesus and yeah. fully cr- stepping into being Christian. Yes. So that's why we didn't wait. We were together for years before we got married. Yeah. And uh, actually, I haven't shared this before. Something that I, so, a- another reason why I personally didn't wait is because when, as Kelly just shared, I, I reconnected to God. I was connected with God growing up in a Christian household. Um, you know, and a lot of these things I knew, but for me, the, a big reason why I lost my virginity is uh, there was a time where this girl wanted to have sex with me. And I remember I was with all of my friends and she was there and then she was basically, I, don't, I think yeah, I told you mm-hmm. that she was, she was like wanting to have sex with me. And I lied to her and I said that I don't want to have sex because I am too young. And I was like 13 at the time. And I, the actual reason was because I wanted to wait until marriage. But I was ashamed of saying that because of the friends that I was hanging around with at the time, they wouldn't have understood. However, because I said that, I remember the two days after that, because it was on a Saturday, that when I went to school on Monday, they all laughed because they found out that I rejected, her, I rejected having sex with her because of that reason. And then that led to me wanting to belong in this pack in this in this in my peer group. So I was like, you know what? Stuff it. I'm going to have sex with someone. So then a few weeks later I went out there and I lost my virginity because I felt pressured to hang uh, to to belong in this in with my friends. Mm-hmm. So that led me on a whole other journey, but maybe that's a story a podcast for another time. Mm-hmm. But it's it's challenging today in society to uh, to wait until have sex because it promotes it having waiting until marriage isn't cool you know yeah. having sex and going out there with multiple people that is the cool thing to do you know yeah I mean I really in my own way too there was so much pressure to have sex in yeah. societally because of the movies I was watching yes. and um, I remember being 16 years old and I was like okay I'm old enough now I'm too old it's embarrassing now I need to have sex yeah. and so I just decided yeah I had a party to have sex with someone. And yeah. I just think it speaks to like both of our stories, like the pressure, yeah. um, the intensity of just like, you need to have sex, otherwise it's embarrassing. Yeah, there's this collective shame with being a virgin. Mm. So with that said, what, are you gonna say something else? No. I'll cut you off a little bit. Okay. Well, oh, can I just, one more thing before okay. we go into it. Like we both, so we both talked about this now that we are saved and connected to Jesus and how it would, how we'd wanna date differently if mm. we could do it again. And I know for me, I definitely wanna wait. And how about for you? Wait, say that again? Well, I, I was just saying, <laughs> we were, we've been reflecting on this. Yeah. Um, and just saying, if we ha- if we were to date again, or like ah, yes. able to do it all over again, absolutely. we would wait. Yes, 100%. Absolutely. Like, especially us being together and feeling the safety, commitment, beauty of marriage. I'm like, oh, it'd be so special if I only had sex with you. Yes. And with that being said, 
there's no need for, like, there's no shame that we, I, for me, I'll just speak for myself, like, I don't want this podcast episode to bring um, shame into you of, like, your past or that you're bad or you're wrong because you had sex. And before that, you know, it's like we, I truly believe we're all doing the best we could with the tools and the knowledge that we had at the time. And now we can have different knowledge and do differently. Yeah. yeah. Our goal isn't to condemn you. No, no, no. So with that said, there a quick story about this. The One week ago, we had our cat. We have five cats, for those of you who don't know. Um, and one of our cats was very sick. And she had the same sickness that one of our very first cats who passed away had. So it was a very serious sickness, and we were extremely feeling, we were feeling anxious, we were feeling scared because we didn't want to go through the same thing that we did when one of our other cats died. And her name is Baby, and she was in the vet for six days. Now, she was stressed out. She was in this tiny little cage. She had strangers jabbing her with needles, giving all of this different medicine. Yeah. She was away from us. Yeah. And I was just thinking of, you know, if, if, the cat could think in English, but had the limited perspective of a cat. If I was baby, our cat, I would be thinking, why are my human parents leaving me? Why are they leaving me with these strangers to give me pain? Why are they leaving me in this tiny little cage when they're coming to see me and then they leave and they just leave me in this tiny little cage? Why are they giving me limited food? Like, why are they doing this? Do, not, do they not care about me? But baby, our cat, could only see from her limited perspective. But us, we were to see from a higher perspective that this is actually the best thing for her in order for her to survive and uh, move away from the sickness, to heal from the sickness. And I was thinking, I think it's the same thing with us humans as we think about our, our perspective to God. God who created this entire universe has a much higher perspective on everything, including sex, compared to us, right? So for me in the past, I'm like, I want to have sex because I want to fit in with my, my friends. I want to have sex because I don't want to be controlled. I want to be cool. I, 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 I want to fit in. I want to have sex because I want to have sex, all right? Why am I going to listen to someone in the sky who's, going, who's telling me to not have sex because I'm going to go to hell if I, if I, if I do do that, all right? I want to live from my own personal desire. However, our perspective is extremely limited compared to God's perspective who tells us to wait to have sex in marriage, right? Because there are consequences that we rarely consider if having sex outside of marriage. And that's what we're going to be speaking about today. Yeah, I recently heard someone say uh, to consider that God is a good dad. And if God was a good dad, how could what he says to us make sense? Right, like a good dad would want to look out for us and have us avoid pain and suffering. And I really loved that. Mm. Um, God's not trying to oppress you. God, God's not trying to shame you. God's just actually trying to guide you towards a life where we do thrive and have love and abundance and peace and joy and all the things that God wants us to experience yes. in life. That's such a great perspective. Like really consider that, right? If God is instructing us to wait until marriage to have sex, how is he being a good dad? With that said, let's dive into the consequences. We're gonna go into physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, relational consequences uh, when having sex outside of marriage. Starting off with the physical. These are ones that we get taught in school, like the physical consequences of having sex in general, but unprotected. But let's just think of some of the consequences. So there can be a risk of STDs, right? If you're having sex just with multiple people having sex outside of marriage, it can be easy to get STDs. But also, unintended pregnancy can be a consequence, right? So that's one of them. And then all of that, it can be legal complications. If you're not married and then you do have a baby and then you split up, there can be all these different legal complications. So yeah. unintended pregnancy, that's a big one. Legal complications, that's a legal consequence. But also STDs is one of them as well. Yeah, and uh, I just had this <laughs> this scene pop into my mind from Mean Girls, and the gym teachers teach them about sex, and he goes, "Don't don't have sex because you will get pregnant and die." <laughs> and we're not trying to like say it like that, but there's really truth in like 
things, bad things can happen. Like, you know, I, I know for me, I always had this delusion that's not going to happen to me. Oh, that's mm. just, that's not going to happen to me. I'm not going to get an STD. I'm not going to get pregnant. Um, but it happens to many people. There's like high statistics that, of, of course, that's a real thing that can happen. And then if you choose to have the baby, there's, there's consequences, uh, yeah, legal consequences, life, relational consequences that will follow that. And then if you choose to have an abortion, um, that can be traumatic, that, that it can be really challenging. And I know our really, our, our culture can kind of talk about abortion so flippantly, mm. but it's actually such a big decision to make. I chose to get an abortion when I was 19, and it's still a decision that sticks with me and that I feel grief and sadness and regret about. And I know that at that time I, I made the best decision that I could, um, but... Based it, on what you knew. Based on what I knew at the time, for sure. And thinking it was it was just a clump of cells and it's no big deal, which is what culture tells us. But the truth is that it's a baby. It's a really big deal. And it's, um, yeah, uh, something that I wish someone would have told me. Yes. So not only are there physical complications, physical consequences and complications, but they're also mental and emotional. And one of them comes from us, you know, it, it, I also speak for myself here, I used to think that sex was just sex. It's just meaningless. It's a meaningless act. It's just sex. It's just two bodies coming together. What's the big deal? However, if sex is just a physical act and that's all there is to it, why is it that it would feel terrible at the thought of someone using you purely because of their own physical pleasure? Using you without considering your humanity, without considering your thoughts, your feelings. Right? They're just using you as an object, wanting to have sex with you to get personal pleasure. Why is it that that would feel terrible if it's just a physical act? It's not just a physical act. There is so much to it. Yeah, and we can see the, the lack of truth in that, like that sex is meaningless because if it was just a physical act, it'd be the same as working out with someone. Yes. And we know that it's not, right? You don't need your workout partner to call you after and, and tell you all the things they like about you. You know, you don't. So it's just, we can take that analogy further but obviously you get the point like it's not just physical yeah and also like if someone was to let's say for example wait until marriage they didn't have sex outside of marriage they didn't have sex at all like they're going into marriage being a virgin they're they, they wouldn't be dealing with the the jealousy that comes up the mental and emotional thoughts of like oh you know was was Am I not as good in bed compared to their 50 other partners? Are they, uh, uh, when, when, even in dating, right? Are they having sex with other people? I remember for me when I was dating a few few girls, but there was one in particular that I think of, where we were dating, but she also would tell me that she was having sex with other people. And I remember just thinking of when we were together, you know, during the weekend, if we weren't hanging out, I was thinking to myself, like, what is she, right now, is she having sex with another man? And just remembering the pain of that. So there is jealousy issues that can come up emotionally, not great for your mental health. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also emotional attachment that can happen when having sex. So there is a lot to it. I think that the depths of heartbreak would not be as intense if people weren't having sex. Like, yes, you could still experience, of course, heartbreak and yeah. sadness if a relationship ended. But if there's not sex involved, there, there there's a lot of pain that's avoided as yeah. well. Yes. Yeah. And I'll jump around a little bit. We might, we might come back to the emotional and mental. But this also leads to relational issues, which is, uh, is more so mental. There is a neurochemical called oxytocin. Right? Some of you may have heard of this, it's like that love hormone, right? The love neurochemical. So when hugging someone, there is a ox there's oxytocin that's released. When there is love that's there, there is oxytocin. When having sex especially, there is oxytocin. And when we're teaching men and women during the dating stage, there is high levels of oxytocin being released when you're having sex with someone. Now the consequence of this, it's great that there's oxytocin there, that's great. And at the same time, the consequence of high oxytocin can have you be blinded by the red flags that the other person might have, right? Just like people can be drunk on alcohol and be blinded by the surroundings, be blinded by a lot of things happening for them, around them, the same thing happens when we're drunk on oxytocin. We're blinded by the red flags that the other person might have, which can lead to getting into a relationship because... Your, 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 the foundation is based on sex, but then getting into a relationship and then seeing that there's so much incompatibility going on. There is many red flags that you didn't see because you were 
blinded by, you're blinded because of having sex early on. And, you know, again, we are hypocrites. We're not coming from a holier than thou. Uh, we're coming from a perspective of this is what we have been through. And I'm sure if you have had sex before that you've also experienced something similar to that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, in the Bible, it talks about how two become one flesh. And I think that the oxytocin, it's no accident. You know, our brain releases a ton of oxytocin and it kind of binds them, us to that, that other person. It's a beautiful thing that God created. But if we're binded to someone that we end up not seeing ever again, that, that is where we experience the mental health issues that come with that, the heartbreak that come with that, the jealousy that comes with that, whatever it is. And so, yeah, I've definitely experienced that as well. The last thing is the spiritual consequences. So let's, let, let's think of it like this. There is a Bible verse, John, John uh, chapter eight, verse 34. It says this, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. So as I was thinking about this Bible verse before this podcast, I was thinking of the word slave. And in order for there to be a slave, there must be a master, right? Now I was thinking of, if we're a slave to sin, in this context here, the, the, let's, let's consider the master being lust, right? And I know that I've definitely been a slave to lust before, right? And if we think of the, the, the master giving commands to the slave in terms of what the slave must obey, I thought of an acronym that might be helpful for you. The, these are the commands that lust tends to give us that keeps us a slave. And the acronym is L-I-E. It lies to us. So L stands for lying, which is to keep things hidden. So maybe when we are a slave to when we are slave to lust, it's to conceal, to keep things quiet, to, to, to not tell the truth about ways that we might be acting, right? Ways that we might be um, doing immoral behaviors that keeps us disconnected from our partner, right? So that's the first one. Anything you wanna add? Mm -mm. And I stands for ignoring the consequences. So I'm sure if you've ever tried to eat healthy before, right? and you have had the thought, I'll speak for myself here, I've had the thought of like, you know what, just start eating healthy tomorrow, don't worry about it, just have the cake now, start tomorrow, don't worry about that, just eat it now, drink it now, start tomorrow. The same thing happens with lust giving us commands. Don't worry, just, just watch that porn video, you can, start, you can stop tomorrow, don't worry about it. Just sleep with that person, don't worry about it, don't wear protection, it's, it's, it's going to be totally okay. So lust commands us to ignore the consequences that comes with living uh, ignores the consequence that living that, that happens outside of living in accordance with God's word. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's the second one. And the third one, which is E, which is to in, continue to engage in sexual behaviors. So when I was a personal trainer, I was a personal trainer for seven years. And one of the things I used to say to my clients is whatever you eat more of, you crave more of. The same thing happens with sin, right? I know for, for me in the past, when I used to watch porn, whenever it is that I would watch porn, whatever I consumed, I, tends to, I tended to crave more of what I was consuming, right? So whatever we eat more of, we crave more of. Whatever we do more of, we tend to crave more of that behavior. So the same thing happens when having sex outside of marriage, like when you're having casual sex, you tend to crave more of that, right? So that is how you can be a slave to the master of lust. I heard this amazing analogy. I can't remember where I heard it from, but it was saying how sex is like fire. So in and of itself, it's not a bad thing. It's an amazing thing. There's important uses to fire, of course. And in the fireplace, it's amazing. It warms the house. It's beautiful. But as soon as you, and, and that's the analogy for sex inside marriage, it's beautiful and it's great. But as soon as you take the fire out of the fireplace and you put it on the couch or you put it on the kitchen table, then you're going to burn the whole house down. So I loved that because it's not that sex is wrong or bad and dirty, but it's just that it's so powerful that it needs to be contained. So I hope that makes sense. The last thing here is from Hebrews 13, 4. It says, marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God would judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. So it says here that 
the Bible is saying to us that it is a sin to have sex outside of marriage. The last thing we want you to consider is not just the, the consequences of having sex outside of marriage, but also the benefits of having sex inside of marriage. So if you think of the different layers that we went from, the different layers of consequences, but physical, emotional, mental, and so on, having sex inside of marriage, because there is commitment from marriage, you feel you are going to be safer. You are going to feel this sense of safety and commitment. And because, you know, one of the consequences that people normally say is, well, I want to test drive the car before I buy it, right? Now, why sex is just going to get better and better and better in marriage is because one of the things that makes someone, one of the things that makes sex great it's not just a one-time event. You can't you can't say that you were sexually incompatible after one time with someone. What makes sex great with someone is time, but there are multiple other things. It's time plus education. As you start to learn more about sex and learn more about your body, you start to learn more about how you love to receive pleasure. You combine education with mentorship, whether that be from a sex therapist or you start to learn about how to give pleasure, how to receive pleasure, and you start to communicate right? You're communicating with your partner how you love to be touched and you're learning from your partner how they love to be touched. And then you combine that with commitment, which is creating safety, then sex is just going to get better and better and better, especially when that's combined with time. So yeah, even though we were having sex before we got married, I noticed that after we got married, I, I felt like it became, yeah, feeling even more safe, even more loving, even more beautiful and exciting. And especially now that we've both connected with God, it was just like, we. I, I personally felt this like beautiful new connection between the two of us um, that I was so grateful for. And so, yeah, there's so much beauty possible with sex inside of marriage. And we want you guys to experience that and, do, and not to experience like the cheap version <laughs> that happens through casual sex or even just sex in a kind of non-marital relationship. Um, I personally want you guys to experience like the full blown beauty of sex inside of marriage. And so that's why I wanted to make this uh, video today, not to scare you, not to shame you, but to invite you to consider this perspective and to really own um, what it is that you want if you want to wait until marriage because it's beautiful, it's not embarrassing, it is courageous, and you should be really proud if that's what you're committing yourself to. So we really hope that you got a lot from this video if you're watching on YouTube or this podcast, if you're listening. Thank you so much for watching this. We'd love to know in the comments, what was your biggest takeaway? Leave that down in the comments. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening to our podcast, please ensure that you uh, you rate this podcast and we'd love to hear what you got from it on our Instagram. If you are following us there, make sure you do. So with that said, we'll see you in the next episode.